Good to see you. I love you. Good to see you. My name is Tom McCann. from Southwest Philly. And on a fateful day in February of 1994, I woke up with a bad stomach. Put me in Bryn Mawr Hospital for a week. Thought I had just a sort of a uh, infection. So they sent me to my family doctor, Dr. Fox, and uh, he indicated because of my blood count that I needed to go to an oncologist. And then I went down the pen, Dr. Fred Goldwine, he pricked my finger, put it on a slide and said, son, you have leukemia. And obviously our worlds were turned upside down. As this is one of the earliest pictures of what I looked like shortly after my treatment at Penn, I went from 195 pounds to 145 pounds. It's not a good diet. <laughs> when I was at Penn and I was initially diagnosed, my wife and I had been engaged. We were engaged and we were expecting to get married the following February of 95 after being diagnosed in February 94. And I love my wife so much because my parents approached Lori and said, Lori, you know, you get back out of this. You know, we're, my mom and dad were like, we'll take care of them. You don't, you don't have to be stuck with this. And my wife looked at him and like, are you, are you nuts? In June of 94, we got married in February of 95, and then I relapsed in September of 95. I had the bone marrow transplant in June of 95 for my brother, Pat. The one thing that I would say is when the doctors brought us in as a family and said that we're all gonna get tested for bone marrow, just to look at my parents, Brian, Kathy, McCann, and the pain on their faces as a family, it was devastating. Uh, back then, most matches were related matches. There were very few, if any, unrelated matches. And they drill four holes in your uh, hip bone, and they take about 60% of your bone marrow out. And by the time I woke up, that bone marrow was already in Tom's body. Dr. Styler, Dr. Crilly, Dr. Topolsky, and the whole crew down at Hahnemann um, that were really building the protocol for this type of treatment. I can remember it vividly, you know, when I knew it was going to be me. I just felt so honored and I felt like it was the tiniest thing that I could do and anybody would do it um, to save their brother's life. And it was just such an honor to be put in that position and this is a picture of the year after I had the transplant. We were down in Washington, D.C., and uh, we took this picture. And I'm grateful for my brother for obvious reasons. Um, to make that sacrifice is unbelievable. And not only make the sacrifice then, I mean, from then on now, my sister-in-law, Christy and Pat, have you know, been by my side and I could call them any time and, you know, they'll be there for me and Lori. And it's, it's very um, amazing that I have that support and it's been incredible. And my brother Brian and my sister Kate. Since I've had eight relapses um, since, you know, that initial remission and, and a diagnosis and so I had a brain tumor, I had testicular cancer, I had a tumor in my shin, tumor in my hand. It um, set the clock back, because I'd get the four years, and I'm like, I just need one more year, and then I'd get the tumor in my brain. And at that time, I had my kids. That was the most devastating. They were young, how do I tell them? I had a lot of anxiety about that. But I made it, uh, my daughter's going to college at Clemson and my son's a junior at Devon Prep. And uh, I'm very blessed to have my wife and my two kids. It's like the old Rocky quote, it's not how hard you can hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. And every time Tom got knocked down, he got up and he continued to fight. 
ever since I've been diagnosed and recovered and have gotten back to the life I lead now, I've always felt that it's my duty to help anybody that is in my situation. And I feel that deeply. Even when I go back for my checkups, I would go into the bone marrow ward and talk to the families, the parents, and you know, just try to give them hope because that's all you need. I think I heard there's been 1,500 unrelated matches so far through the foundation. I mean, a couple of years ago, you know, you had that single mom who in Michigan who was dying of cancer, and then this young man who's a football player at the College of New Jersey his senior year gets the call, donates the bone marrow, saves this woman's life, and then a year later they meet at the foundation. You had 400 people at that event, and 400 people were crying their eyes out just to see that reunion of two people who had never met each other. But this young man gave, did the ultimate sacrifice to save this person he didn't even know. To me, when I think about it, that, that's what's really awesome about the Andy Talley Foundation. We're grateful for, you know, recognizing us and allow us to share our story. I'm just grateful, you know, I'm alive. And it's 30 years now since I've been diagnosed and I'm still counting. So I plan to, to keep on chugging. The brotherhood of marrow, the bond we share can never be broken. Feelings I have for you are often left unspoken. Given of yourself seems to be your special talent, occasionally forcing you to be heroically valiant. Watching you develop into a young man has been an experience. Life's tribulations has offered little or no interference. The wisdom you possess far exceeds your age. The success you enjoy are an excellent gauge. The positive attitude you maintain is a true inspiration. Depth of character never comes into question. An outstanding role model you will make. The trials you will blaze cause me to quake. I am truly blessed and proud to be your brother. Your kindness and generosity can be compared to no other. Take the gifts from God and continue to grow. Let your natural abilities continue to glow. The bottom line is always remain true to yourself, despite how much fame and accumulated wealth. With the lives we share, there is always tomorrow. Thanks to you, I have a new life with your marrow. Written by Thomas J. McCann, 1995, one year past bone marrow transplant. <laughs>